200 years ago, John Wesley made a momentous decision. Right here on the edge of the city of London, the Methodists were to have for the first time a church of their own, Wesley's Chapel. It rapidly became the spiritual home of the people called Methodists. But today the chapel is closed, its door shut and bolted, and the entrance is barred by a high wire fence. Danger, no access, and for a very good reason, John Wesley's chapel has been declared unsafe. Dry rotten woodworm are sweeping through the timbers inside. On the outside, the main walls are bending. Even the foundations are a source of danger. Time has finally caught up with Wesley's chapel, and the situation is critical. Alan Bertress, you're the minister of this famous Wesley Chapel. Tell me just how extensive is the damage to the chapel? It's very extensive indeed. Not least the dry rot which has just begun to appear. Look at it over here. That in the gallery and in uh, probably in other parts of the building but also the walls are weak because of the very large very fine windows, the foundations are insecure, we have a magnificent Adam ceiling, the largest unsupported ceiling space in the whole of the London area, but above that is a roof that has to come off and it's going to be a very ticklish job not damaging the ceiling. This dry rot, tell me, how extensive does it really look to you? Well, we fear that it might be very bad indeed. We found it in more places than one, and when we really get into it, we may find that it's very extensive. Tell me, how long has this dry rot been in the building, do you know? We don't know, but we imagine it must have been here for a very long time. That's just the way of it with old buildings. What effect is all this having upon the work of Wesley's Chapel? It's made it impossible for us to meet here for worship or to have any kind of um, visitors or people here for any meeting of any sort. So we're quite crippled for the use of the building until it's put right again. But saving the chapel isn't our only concern. Just down the road from here, crammed into the basement of an office block, is a unique collection of documents. The personal and private papers of John Wesley and his family and the archives of the Methodist Church. It's the finest collection of its kind anywhere in the world, yet these fragile and often irreplaceable papers are stored in conditions that can only put them at risk. It's a critical situation. And who better to describe it than the man who has to live with it, Dr. John Bomer, in charge of the Wesley Library and Archives. Well, my job is threefold. First of all, I have to collect. We're constantly gathering material. Secondly, I have to conserve, that is, to take care of it when I get it. And thirdly, make it available to students and others who wish to use it. And in all this, what's your biggest single problem? Oh, our biggest single problem is the, uh, the extreme dryness and the too hot down here. And, of course, we have very little daylight. Have you any daylight at all? Just a little, but not sufficient to work by. I imagine a lot of people come here to do research for Methodist history. How much space have you got for people to do research in? Well, we can accommodate only three students at a time, comfortably, that is, which oh. is not very much. Only three? Only three. But there must be hundreds of people in the course of a year. Yes, very time. often we have to put them in all sorts of corners and odd places so that they can work. Well, tell me, that's very limited. Mm -hmm. Are all the Methodist treasures stored here in these basements? Well, we have the bulk of the Wesley treasures, but um, the Methodist archives of Great Britain are in two places. We have the Wesley treasures here, and then we have that vast, rich collection of um, um, letters and documents and diaries of the, uh, belonging to the Methodist Missionary Society, which um, is three miles away. Three miles across London? Yes. In plenty of space? Very, very cramped. We are really up against a problem there. The strong room is bursting at the seams if strong rooms could burst. <laughs> well, you've got all kinds of wonderful things here. Would you like to show me some of your treasures? Well, perhaps our greatest single treasure, of course, is Wesley's Field Bible. I've never touched it before. Well, you can touch it now. An interesting work because it was printed by a man called John Field, and Wesley himself used it in his field preaching. 
So something. the word field has a double, double meaning. meaning. Yes. It was given to Wesley in 1766. Before he died, he gave it to Henry Moore, one of his preachers. Before Henry Moore died, he handed it to the then president of the Wesleyan Conference with the request that it be handed down from one president to another. And that has been done ever since. Well, that's really touching a piece of history. Can I put that back in put the case? Put it back in the case, yes. Thank you very much. We have a relic of Charles Wesley in one of his manuscript hymns, one of the best known hymns, as it were, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. And that's in his own handwriting. It's in his own handwriting. I imagine that Wesley jotted these hymns down on pieces of paper as the inspiration came to him. And then in later, in some later time, he gathered them together in a book such as this, of which we have 20 or 30 here. In his own handwriting. In his own handwriting. And this hymn says, changed from glory into glory. And that's our hope, not only for Wesley's chapel, but for the archives that's department too. Oh yes. So we're faced with two urgent and critical problems. The most urgent, of course, is to save Wesley's chapel. But his personal papers and the Methodist archives must be rescued as well and housed in conditions worthy of their outstanding historical importance. I asked Trevor Wilkinson, the architect in charge of the restoration project, what a visitor to the chapel could expect to see when the work had been completed. Well, they will enter in the uh, vestibule area of the chapel. That will be wider than it is at present. We'll have a glazed screen looking into the chapel, giving much more light into that area. They will visit the chapel, they will then go through into the exhibition areas, into the galleries. There are special uh, viewing platforms looking out over the graveyard area. There um, will be study facilities for postgraduates and graduates. There will be libraries. And there will be a small office contents at the rear, which will uh, give a sense of enclosure to the graveyard at the rear. This, at the moment, is overgrown and very nasty and is really and truly an eyesore. What had you in mind when you redesigned this? Well, we have the problems of being flanked on either side by nondescript office buildings and on the opposite side of the road, warehouses. What we felt was the proper solution was to give a sense of enclosure, to use materials that would reflect the uh, apsidal end of the chapel and to give varying reflections of uh, John Wesley's tomb. This we feel we've managed to do. I want this complex to be a, an area uh, of life, of vitality, for the next hundred years. Mr. President, what is the official view of British Methodism about this project? That of course it must proceed. We are the custodians of the traditions handed on to us by those early Methodists who visit with their pennies we're the custodians of it for the whole of world Methodism, of which it's the mother church. It mustn't be allowed to fall down. This is what our people have been saying. Let me ask you, as the president of the Methodist Conference in Britain, how much has Britain raised towards this project already? In dollar terms, 345,000. That's a considerable effort. It is a large effort, and the sooner we get off the ground with the job, the better we shall like it. The immediate job is keeping the chapel standing up before anything else is done. And the inflationary rate on that is at the rate of something like two and a half thousand dollars a week. Thank you, Mr. President. Alan Walker, you are one of the leading Methodist preachers in the world. You don't only preach in Australia, but all over the world in the name of Methodism. Why do you want to see this project succeed? Methodism is a world family, and as a family it needs a center, a heart. This chapel is a symbol of the unity of this family to people all over the world. Therefore, the symbol should be preserved. Then, of course, John Wesley is as contemporary today as ever he was, and therefore we're not talking only about something very old. We're talking about a center that represents the Christian gospel in its proclamation and the need of the world today. Lord Soper, why do you want to keep a building up? Well, I'm not interested in bricks and mortar. I'm interested in what they stand for and what these particular bits of bricks and mortar and stone have stood for and still do. And therefore, it's the spirit of Methodism which sent uh, John Wesley into the open air and sent his followers into the open air, which I think is worth preserving. And if people can come to this particular shrine and recover the sense of that urgency and then go out in the open air and lose their voices and give their hearts away proclaiming the gospel, I'm for it. 
This was John Wesley's study for the last 12 years of his life. It's just across the courtyard from the chapel. The grandfather clock, 300 years old, still keeping excellent time. The robes that he wore, the tricorn hat, the buckle shoes, and above me, the famous portrait by Frank Salisbury. So this is where he lived and worked for the last years. It's pretty much the way it was then. And I can't help wondering if he'd been making this appeal, what kind of words he would have used. Perhaps he'd have used the very same words that he wrote in 1776 when the original chapel was being built. I have the original document here in my hand. Now help the parent society, says John Wesley, which has helped others for so many years so willingly and so largely. Now help me, who account this a kindness done to myself, perhaps the last of this sort, which I shall ask of you. Subscribe what you conveniently can to be paid either now or at Christmas or at Lady Day next. I am your affectionate brother, John Wesley. So now it's up to you. This mother church and its treasures must be saved. Here in Britain, we've already made a start, but there's still a long way to go. The target figure is 850,000 pounds and that's nearly two million dollars. But time is running out. The 200th anniversary of John Wesley's chapel is almost upon us, so it's vital that work should begin right away. So everything now depends on you and on your response to this appeal.